Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'll be presenting on anti-tubular treatment, anti-tubercular treatment in ocular tuberculosis suspects and ophthalmologist accord. There is no conflicts of interest, no financial disclosure, and consent is taken from all patients. TB is the 13th leading cause of the death in the world as per WHO, caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It has both pulmonary as well as extrapulmonary manifestation. Ocular TB includes all forms of intraocular as well as extraocular inflammation due to mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. Its incidence ranges from 1.4% to 5.74%, even up to 10% in endemic regions. It can affect any ocular tissue, but mostly UVL tissue. TB posterior uveitis, and particularly TB choroiditis, is the commonest manifestation. Tuberculosis screen test, chest X-ray, polymerase chain reaction, interferon gamma release assay, HRCT, and culture are some of the tests to, that helps in diagnosis. In particular, culture is the gold standard. The objective is to consider ATG in highly clinically suspicious cases of ocular TB. During methodology, all patients of suspected ocular tub tuberculosis attending the IOPD were thoroughly examined with these tests. In investigations like CBC, ESR, RBS, urine routine microscopy, viral markers, VDRL, toxoplasma, IgE, IgM, tuberculin test, HLA B27, chest X ray, and HRCT were performed according to the needs of the patient. It was conducted in the Department of Ophthalmology, Regional Diagnostic Center, Department of Pulmonology, and Department of Radiology. It's a prospective observation, observational study with one year period of study. All cases of suspected ocular TB were included. Known cases of TB and those with previous history of ATT were excluded. Out of a total of 60 cases, we noted three cases of tassitis, three as squamous blepharitis, five with severe VKC, two recurrent tongue-shaped ulcer, and 35 chronic uveitis, four vitritis, five eels disease, two papillitis, and one recurrent solar tumor. Out of these, the chronic uveitis contribute to 59% of the case load. So various phenotypes and difficulty in the insufficiency in sample collection makes definitive diagnosis of ocular to be challenging. So the diagnosis of presumed ocular TB can be made one, clinical features highly suggestive of TB with positive immunological tests supporting or any lesion on the chest X-ray or CT scan suggestive of TB. So the management is just similar to the pulmonary TB. Uh, we'll be giving rifampicin, isoniazide, pyrazinamide and dithabutal for two months and then rifampicin and isoniazide for four months. Co-treatment with corticosteroids can overcome paradoxical worsening after initiation of ATT. So my take home message is start ATT in high in cases of high clinical suspicion of ocular TB even if there are no definitive investigations supporting provided all other possible causes are ruled out. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sayasananda. What is the prevalence of TB in your patient population? I mean, in a year in your say medicine OPD, out of the total patients. How many tubercular patients come in? We do come across a lot, ma'am. Okay, so if you, uh, you know, if that data was there, this would have been a much stronger presentation because 35 presumed cases of ocular tuberculosis in a year is very high, even in centers which deal regularly with intraocular infections. So it would help if we have the background that what population we are getting this out of. Right. And because it always depends on, uh, you know, we can't blanketly say that whenever we see a patient like this, we are going to suspect ocular tuberculosis, hmm. right? What, what is the likelihood? Okay. So whenever we suspect an ocular TB patient, we are, uh, when patient should have at least one, uh, one of the- what I'm trying to say, point out is that it depends on what your patient population is okay so the likelihood ratio that that is what we are talking about. 